All right, good afternoon. Um, thank you all for being here. Important win for us. Um, obviously, gets us 3-1 and one overall, 1-0 one oh in the Big 12. 3-0 and oh at, oh at home. I think all good football teams win at home. Uh, said this after the game and uh, going back and just talking to our guys and, and watching the tape is I thought the fans that 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 were here and, and stayed through the weather uh, did a really good job at the end of that game. Um, and we've got a group, uh, Mountaineer Maniacs on campus, and they do a tremendous job. They do it in basketball and football. Uh, they're at women's soccer. I was over there the other night, and that, that group does a tremendous job. And there's a huge group of them. Now they're up in the uppers. we got to get them down in the lower seats. But, uh, man, they do a really good job. And I see them every Friday on home games when I'm on campus. And, and so I want to give them a shout out. Pre appreciate what they do. And they help create a really good atmosphere. Um, recap Texas Tech. Uh, talk about positives. I'll do the same deal I do for you all every week. Um, and then hit some areas we've got to improve in all three phases. Uh, the, the thing on special teams I want to hit on first is our operations. Like, I think Austin Brinkman's as good as anybody in the country. Um, Snapped the ball really well on Saturday. Uh, Grayson did a great job holding. Ollie handled all those snaps. And in the wind and rain um, and cold, uh, that, that becomes more difficult. And those guys did a good job. Ollie punted. That may be the best game he's had overall punting. He uh, Two inside the 20, he had a 41-yard net, put the ball up there. They had no returns. Um, he had a couple – We, you know, they fumbled a ball that we really should have recovered. And um, – so he did a really nice job. Mike made two key field goals, one almost 46 yards, uh, which uh, which ended up being a really big play in the game. And then Preston Fox, he had three returns for 45 yards. Um, he also uh, – and I thought he also – in he would have had closer to 60 if we didn't have a penalty. But catching punts is the, the hardest thing to do in football, in my opinion. All right. It's – especially that punter, the McNamara kid is really good. And he's hitting them 50 plus. The wind's blowing all over the place, and it's raining. And so, thought he did a really good job. Um, areas to improve. Hey, real quick, Coleman. Hey, will you do me a favor? Grab our players of the week. I forgot them. I just realized I did did that. It's in that folder. Um, thanks. Um, areas we got to improve. Our kickoff coverage wasn't good enough. If you look at our stats, you're going to say, "Oh, well, you know, the stats aren't bad." But they had a big return get called back, and it should have got called back. It was clear holding on the play but our kickoff coverage got to be got to be better the McCray kid that Texas Tech has is really fast that's why we tried so hard to get him um but he's really fast but we've got to do a better job on those field returns um and then the penalty on punt return where we had to start inside the 10 on a drive there late in the second half we got to be we got to be smarter than that um defensively I thought the positives are we started extremely fast like Texas Tech is a team traditionally that does a bunch of different things early um, and they usually come out of the gates fast. And four out of the first five drives were three and outs. Four out of the first five. And so I thought we got aligned to tempo, which is something, you know, the work that we put in um, has really paid off in that in that area. We're going to get tested again this week on that. I thought we got a lot of pressure on the quarterback. Our front continues to play at a high level, and we're playing a bunch of guys. Then our, our coverage was much improved. I know we talked about that a little bit in detail after the game. And then third down, you know, complete 180 from what we did last year on third downs. Um, where we got to where we got to improve. I thought we got tired at the end. If you look at the last drives, I think it was 12, 13, and 15 plays. Um, we didn't play as well late. We missed some tackles that we didn't miss early earlier in the game. Some of that's the Brooks kid is good, um, and we got a little high. And so I think we can play the run better. You know, I think that's. You know, we played a light box, so some of it was what we were doing schematically. But I think we can, as the year progresses, we need to play the run better. Offensively, you know, I thought the O-line and tight ends played really well. Um, and our O-line is, is going to be the strength of our entire football team. And Wyatt Milam and Zach Frazier and, and those guys, they continue to play at really an elite level. Um, and I thought our tight ends, Cole Taylor and Traylon Davis, both played well, both in the run and the pass game. Uh, we controlled the Glock. You know, um, and I thought we had two huge answers on after Texas Tech score. So, we throw the bad pick. They get it on a short field. Defense holds, which was a huge play. Go up, Texas Tech goes up 3 nothing, And then we immediately respond with a touchdown drive, a long touchdown drive. Um, I think we ran the ball every play maybe, but all except one. And it was 7-3. to three. And then, you know, it's 13-10. to 10. They score a touchdown finally. Uh, 
and you know we we kind of bent. We didn't play very well offensively in the second half, but they scored to make it a three point game, and then we immediately re, uh, come back with a touchdown drive. So um, I thought we responded really well offensively. Um, as far as improving, we didn't play well enough at running back or receiver. Like we got to play way better. You know, it, it either one of those positions. We got to do more. We got to make more plays to help the quarterbacks. Um, and our pass game just all around has got to be better. You know, it, it wasn't a game. I mean, we call it a decent number of pass plays, really. Um, but we just didn't do a very good job executing. We can throw it better at quarterback. We need to protect him a little better. Um, but I, we just didn't make a whole lot of plays in space, and we got to do better than that. Um, players of the week this week, uh, and our O-lineman of the week was Zach Frazier. He graded out 94%, had four knockdowns, um, was really productive. Plays the game the right way. Special teams was Preston Fox. Told you he had three punt returns. They were big. Um, had another one called back. Defense player of the week, which is – I thought this guy played huge. He played 60 snaps. Played 16 a week ago. We played him at three different positions. He had three tackles, a sack, three quarterback hurries, and three PBUs, you know. And Marcus Floyd, I thought he played, played really well. Um, made a couple of huge plays on that last uh, – that last series there that Texas Tech had. Um, offense player of the week was Wyatt Milam. I mean, I thought, I thought he was the best player on the field, man. I thought he played really, really well. Um, had five knockdowns, was dominant. Um, and then we always give a blue-collar award. Eddie V gets it on defense. I think he had seven tackles of defense, playing defensive line. You don't, you don't ever see that. And a lot of it's just pure effort. And then Traylon Davis on offense. You know, does a lot of the dirty work, doesn't get a whole lot of the publicity, um, but he kind of makes us go in the run game. Uh, scout team players were were Tyler Evans uh, for offense. He's a kid that will help us down the road. Uh, Tyler Kane um, uh, on defense playing linebacker, and then Deuce Shabazz at, at special teams. Um, and our scout teams have done a good job, so I'm happy for those guys. Um, so that's the, uh, that's, that's the awards for the week. And then kind of turn it over to TCU, kind of intro those guys. Uh, first of all, national runners up last year. You know, you guys know that. Um, really uh, got beaten the championship game in Dallas and known Sonny for a long time. He actually coached me when I was at Kentucky. Um, but they do a really good job. And they we lost a tough one here last year. It was 34-31. We had a chance with you know just under four minutes to go to go win the game. We didn't get it done. And then we jump off the sides and they take a free play. And score a touchdown there right at the end, um, but missed opportunity. And and this is our last opportunity before we get a much needed buy. You know, we play this one, and then we get a little bit of time off. Guys are eager. You know, I think this is about proving if if we're going to be a contender in the league or not. Going, you know, they were one of the favorites uh, preseason. Obviously, a team that that went on a tremendous run last year. So we're going on the road in a tough environment, and and we need to we need to. Take advantage of that opportunity. If you look at them, special teams, they've got a punter. He's been there forever. Uh, Sandy, he can, he can, he's he's really talented and he's done a great job throughout his career. Kicker's got a strong leg. He's already made a 57 yarder. Um, punt returner is a transfer from uh, Alabama. I think he's averaging double digits on his returns. He can go at any time. And then their kickoff return is one of the best in the country. And they've been good at kickoff return when Gary was the head coach. It's just for a long time they've been good. And they've always had special returners. Um, they hit us on one a few years ago. And, um, you know, that's going to be a huge challenge for us. They've had, I think, an 86-yard return already. Hit big one versus Colorado, a big one versus Houston. Um, that's going to be a factor. Uh, offensively, if you look at them, I think Kendall does a great job. Uh, his body of work kind of speaks for himself. Um, their tempo – you know, very similar in some ways to Texas Tech, but they're going to be committed to the run at all the time. They're they're going to be a run first team. That, they're going to throw it, but they're committed to the run, and that's why he's done it his whole career. Um, got a ton of skill guys. Things starts with the quarterback Chandler Morris. Um, obviously, dad really successful coach, and he's playing at a, at a high level. And he can run. He throws the ball from a bunch of different arm angles. Um, at running back. They're playing a couple. I think those guys are really good. They're tough physical runners. People don't talk about that enough. I think they're really physical uh, runners. Uh, Richardson at wide out is tr came over from Oklahoma State. He's their leading receiver at this point. Uh, Savion Williams caught a big go ball at the end of the game versus us last year. He He's a tall physical guy. They got a good mix. They got some guys that are little guys that can run. They got big guys that can body you up. They got good possession players. I think the tight end is a uh, – 
Uh, Wiley, he played well against us last year. He's the, he's a good player. They got good weapons on offense. Left tackle and left guard have been playing forever. And so a real seasoned group offensively. Defensively, uh, three down front, three safety group. It's the first one of those we've played uh, this year, first of, of three or four that we'll, that we'll run into. Um, they've been great in the red zone, and, they, and they're good at taking the ball away. And that was kind of their MO last year, and they've continued that this year. The nose guard, uh, 52, uh, Williams, I think he is – he's kind of what makes them go defensively. Um, you got to have a special nose guard to play that front, and, and he's, he's playing at an elite level. It'll be a really good matchup, him and Zach. Um, the Hodge – the inside linebackers back. He makes a ton of tackles. Um, they got Hodge and Hodges, and you know, fifty-seven Hodges was the I think newcomer of the the year last year defensively coming over from Navy. Really good player. Josh Newton, a corner that we again we tried like heck to get here, um, and he was on the breakout performers last year, transferring from ULM, and he's on a bunch of NFL draft boards, and and so they got a lot of guys back in the secondary, and and they got a lot of picks last year, so really good challenge. Um, Looking forward to getting getting preparation started and, and seeing kind of where we're at. So, with that, questions? Well, first obvious question is injuries, Garrett, and then there are others, obviously. Yeah, so we'll, we're going to see um, Garrett kind of – he was available on Saturday, but he did not warm up very well, you know. And he would emergency been ready, but we'd have, have to been – we'd have had to help him out. And so, I really don't want to play him until he's fully healthy. Um, and he didn't make a whole lot of progress from Wednesday to Saturday. Um, he worked with our trainers today. We'll see what he has Tuesday and Wednesday. Um, and so, um, I really don't have any more than that. If he can practice full go on Tuesday and Wednesday, then then he'll play. If if he if he if he can't, then probably be the same. Because then that would give him two weeks from Thursday to to really get to get himself healthy. Um, anybody else that you wanted to ask about? Keyshawn, because I know he All right, Keyshawn's going to – he's going to he's get surgery uh, this week and he'll be out for the year. So, both him – he and Montre are out for the are out for the year. Is that a situation, too, where he could come back or does he need to – Keyshawn? Yeah. Keyshawn, I believe, has a red shirt. Yeah. Montre will have to go to uh, – have to file an appeal. Anybody else injury-wise while we're on that topic? Do you have questions about – Donaldson, yeah, he's fine. Yeah, he's got to play better, but he's fine. So, Omos Moss got binged up. See, okay. Yeah, he came back. Yeah, he got an ankle, got rolled up. He came back and finished. Um, and Jaquay came in and did a nice job as well. But he got he got rolled up, but he'll he'll be fine. I think he'll be able to practice tomorrow and be good. So you know, Garrett's dependent. But so, what'd you think of Nico? What's he got to do better? Yeah, well, I thought he made um, considerable jump from the first game. You know, when he played against Pitt. And really, if you think about it, he's played quite a bit the last three weeks. So he played second half versus Duquesne, um, played all but five snaps versus Pitt, and then the whole game on Saturday. And I think he's made steady improvement, you know, the, and, and that's to be expected. Um, I thought that, you know, he really th he threw some nice balls. There was only a couple, you know, the pick, the first pick was not was not a very good decision. Um, but I thought he threw the ball pretty well. We got to get better on the deep balls. The one he threw to EJ late was a great throw. We threw a couple of go balls where he didn't really give the guys a chance. So we got to do better at that. Um, overall, decision making was improved. Not exactly what we would like, but improved. Um, he just didn't get a whole lot of help. You know, our offensive skill guys got to help him out. And, you know, whether it's making plays, making people miss, we just got to do a better job around him. But I'm pleased with his improvement. Can he play better? Yes. Will he be better? I believe so. Um, but I wasn't. Um, I wasn't displeased with how he played on, on Saturday. He gave us a chance. What did you think about uh, Sean Boyle getting uh, back up reps? Yeah, Sean, you know, he and uh, Scotty Keene are kind of split back up reps, or the, being uh, the third. Garrett would have been the backup on Saturday because we felt like he could protect himself, so he was going to be the backup in emergency duty. Um, but Boyle, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> we want to redshirt him. He's got he's got some improvement he needs to make. We don't want to play him too early, um, but he got better last week, you know, and he's getting better. They they basically do team reps Monday and Tuesday, and then seven on seven on Thursday, and uh, and he's getting better. Right now, he and uh, Scotty Keene are competing for that third spot. Oh, and he was stunned. And I'll ask you. Um, I asked. I said, "Are you aware that you won five of your last seven games?" And he gave me this blank look. I mean, is that just a, a the way you're preparing them to just be focused on what they're doing. 
but I mean, you've put together a little bit of a run here, a little bit over last year. Yeah, you know, I think other than that, the first half defensively versus Kansas State, we put together some some pretty good string of football, you know. Um, and really, outside of the first half, if in when you go through that seven game stretch, you know, there's a couple pass plays we'd like to have back in Duquesne and Penn State, um, and didn't play well at all the first half versus Kansas State, but we've played better defensively. Um, and we played a pretty good run of teams too, you know. So, yeah, I'm aware of it. I mean, I like I'm not shocked we're three and one. You know what I mean? Like I, I thought we had a chance. Nobody else wanted to listen, but I thought we had a chance. So, how do you get your receivers better? Well, they just got to make plays, man. We're we need we're going to shorten the the rotation up. I think we're playing too many guys. Devin didn't play well, but you know he. And I don't, I don't, I don't think he'd mind me saying this. Like he didn't play as good as we expect him to play, or we need him to play. You know, he's our, he's our number one guy, and he earned that opportunity. But his grandmother passed away late in the week last, last week, and, um, you know, I think that bothered him. You know, and I think sometimes, you know, not, not on purpose, but I think sometimes just in college sports we lose the fact that, you know, that. Things like that. There's we're dealing with a lot. There, some of these kids are dealing with a lot off the field, and that naturally is going to turn into some on-field performance. And I and I do. I'm not giving him an excuse. I'm not giving him an out. Doesn't affect how we're coaching him, but I think that really affected him in his play. And I probably underestimated that going into the game. Um, but we're we need to shore it up. You know, I think that EJ Horton's going to play more. You know, I'd love for him to. He had a chance to make a play on that, but he's going to play more. Um, and so he and Hudson and Traylon Ray. Um, and Traylon played a decent bit on Saturday, but we're going to get those guys more up and ready. Yeah, he's yeah, yeah, no doubt. He's but he's got to practice better. That's the thing with these young the, the young guys, man, is they really they got to earn the opportunity in practice. You know, not just for me or their position coach, but for their teammates. You know, and and we need him to play because he has the ability to make plays in space. But he's got to earn that right in practice. He didn't have a great week of practice last week. Uh, he's going to get opportunities like. Um, because we want to play him, you know, he, he will make us better. The first, uh, flight of the year, um, I remember last year you talked a little about trying to change up the mm -hmm. travel schedule. Um, just how are you approaching this one? Yeah, I thought we, uh, we had that run, I don't know, somewhere around year two, year three, where we really struggled on the road. We've actually, we've handled those, ga those games better now. Um, but yeah, I think we're in a pretty good routine. You know, the biggest thing is a lot of these guys haven't flown. So, some of your um, high school, you know, guys that are coming in from high school have never flown. And so, that's an adjustment. So, we try to deal with that early in the week. Uh, Patrick Johnston, who's our ops, I, I tell him, hey, go find out who hadn't flown. Let's let's talk them through it and see if, what, you know, do, we, do they need Dramamine? Do we need to do some uh, – what do we need here? So, they, that's that's as big an issue as anything. What do you think happened with, with CJ? You mentioned he didn't play well. He's had such a string and was mm -hmm. playing so well earlier. In the played second. great in the second half versus Pitt, man. He really did. Um, I don't know. You, you'd have to ask him. You know, I think that he didn't finish runs as well as he can. Um, and he's got some nagging things, but nothing that's going to keep him out. You know, it's hard to play running back. There's a lot of shots, you know. Like, I always – I laugh and tell him, I'm like, the quarterback's handing it off and you're running it. So, it's 9 on 11 every time. You know, so there's going to be a free hitter. And we'll design it the best we can, but there's going to be a free hitter at some point. Um, and so um, – but I think he's got to finish his runs better. Um, I thought he um, – and if you look at how he ran the ball against Penn State and how he ran the ball versus uh, Pitt, like he can do that. And and he knows it. He can play better. we got to get him involved in the pass game a little bit more too. He made a really nice play over on the side on their sideline and we gotta do a better job of getting him the ball. He was open a few times. This will be your fourth night game coach. How does that game day for you differ to get the guys ready to go not too early but have them ready. Yeah. You know, at night and with it being central time too, it's a little different as well. Yeah. What time's the kick is the kickoff at seven central, eight Eastern? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um you know, it's been a bigger deal because we're practicing in the mornings now. And so, intentionally, in fall camp, we practice a lot in the evenings. And we did a couple, even back in the spring, we did a couple night scrimmages. Um, and so, you, you know, after you've done it a few times, it's kind of the guys know the routine. You know, I think they like playing. It's kind of – it's it's one of these things. You like getting home early, 
you like playing early so you can have a normal Saturday night, but you like playing under the lights. There's something about playing under the lights too. Um, but we're, we're in a pretty good rhythm. This is um, all but one game we've played in the evening, so I think our guys will handle it fine. Third down defense, 25%. Yeah, yeah, big, big, big difference. Um, I think, you know, some of what I talked about with uh, with uh, Kazaza when he asked uh, on Saturday after the game is we're playing, we're doing a better job in our zone coverages, um, and in some of our our eight and seven man drops, we're doing a better job of covering people. I think that's part of it. I think we're creating more pressure. Um, as well, whether we're sending three, four, or five, we're creating more pressure, um, and we're getting in some more friendly down a distance. You know, we're, which means we're better on the first and tens, and we're getting teams in more third and longs. The receivers, I mean, some of it is it simply just breaking some tackles. I mean, it seems yeah. like there's been opportunities there. We had some chance on screens, didn't we? Penalties. You guys had some struggles there last year. This year you've been really good, and it was decisive this mm. past weekend. Is it something you, you coach up, or is it just veterans understanding things? How's no, that I think there's an in, there's an intentionality to it. You know, we've really talked about being a disciplined team this year, and, and you know what does that look like? And penalties are definitely one of them. The thing that that we've talked about, and you've heard me say this, Greg, is you know there's two types of leverage. There's pad leverage, and there's hand leverage, right? And where it gets you in trouble, if you play high, then you're going you're gonna to get a bunch of holding calls. Um, and if your hands are outside, you're going to get a bunch of holding calls. And it's bad football. And so we've, we've spent a lot of time as playing lower and then playing with our elbows tight and getting our hands inside where you don't expose yourself. And that's on the perimeter uh, on offense. It's, it's in the interior on both sides of the ball. And it's out in space and secondary, you know. And uh, I think we're doing a better job with our eyes in the secondary and playing playing with our eyes and not uh, necessarily playing the receiver. Um, but, yeah, there's an intentionality. And here's the other thing, too, is we've, we've invested dollars in it because we've paid to have real referees every day in spring and every day in fall camp. You know, so we've, we've – we've, because they don't just show up on their goodwill. You know, like you got to pay them. And, uh, and so we've invested in that piece of it, too. And I tell them to throw everything you see. And and that's really what we've done since spring because we had to get better at it. You know that that was the point where it was hurting us. And we've had we've had some ill time penalties and some ones that are frustrating to me. Like I can deal with an aggressive penalty, uh, but in a penalty like we had a late hit on punt return the other day, that, that's bad ball. You know CJ taking his helmet off, he's better than that. You know we had a late hit on kickoff return, we're better than that. Um, but we're not getting the false starts and and some of the procedure stuff that we had in the past. Now, knock on wood, um, you go down to TCU, they got all their students right behind you. They make it difficult on you. So um, we need to make sure we continue that run. Most physical team you've had in your time here, and it looked like this those one? last two games yeah. were really physical games. They were. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, this is the most physical. You know, I think our this is the best totality O-line and D-line we've had. You know, I think if – and if you can be really good in the trenches and, and those guys set the tone, and if you look at, you know, from a leadership standpoint, like we've had five captains that we've rotated, and Doug and, and Zach are on the O-line, and they kind of set the standard for the entire offense. And then Sean Martin and Lee Coba are on the in the front six, and they kind of set the standard defensively. So I think that, that helps too. How are those guys coming along, those backups at cornerback? You know, yeah, you know, Jacoby played. Jacoby played, and he's he's another one that's he's he's dealing with a, a real tragedy off the field too. And Jacoby played; he played two series, and we went three and out both series. He played, and he continues to progress. Um, did a good job on special teams as well. Um, and then at safety, we rotated those three guys. You know, Marcus played some deep safety. Uh, he played some nickel too, and and Hershey and and Lance. I thought Lance Dixon played one of probably his best game that he's played in his career here. Um, on defense. And so, um, you know, we'll continue, like, we're continuing to work Aiden Nelson and Josiah Jackson. You know, at some point they're going to be needed in, at safety. Uh, Jordan Jackson keeps getting a lot of work at corner. Lamp's going to play. Lamp has turned into a, a, a high-level special teams player. He made a couple put plays at Gunner and, and on the kickoff team as well. I've got, I got to ask you, um, I didn't watch the SMU game, but I noticed – uh, really got after the quarterback. Three sacks, four hurries, two INTs. Is that a concern, what they do? Yeah, I mean, I think they're fourth in the country in, in sacks. And and they and that's not necessarily the uh, 
what happens in uh, the front that they play. But they've done a really good job. And they're getting interior pressure. They get the fourth rusher, um, both both Hodge and Hodges. And uh, number four, who are their linebackers, they they all add them as the fourth or the fifth rusher. And those are guys who are good, and they're winning a bunch of one-on-ones. Um, but, yeah, for sure, it's definitely, you know, anytime you look and when you – Sunday when you kind of turn the page to your next opponent, you look at the stats and you're going to like, oh, okay, fourth in the country in sacks. I mean, that's going to grab that's going to grab your attention. Any similarities to what Narduzzi does with pressure? Anything? No, nah, not different because it's all it's yeah. They're both, you know, what what Pitt does is unique to them, um, and it's worked for them for a really long time. Um, but they're a four down front. This is a three down. There's um, they. Uh, they do it different. It's kind of what uh, Iowa State started, and, and people put their own spin on it. And this isn't – they put their own spin on it, and they're getting pressure. They're doing a nice job. They're probably mixing up their coverages more than, than a lot of teams that play the three safety look. What's the, what's the next step for this team uh, as far as gaining, gaining attention, respect, shall we say, mm-hmm. compared to the way they feel like about you Yeah, know, they got to – you got to go win. You got to go win. And I think the – the whole goal is you get in November with a chance to win your league. You know, I think – and so um, that's that's kind of the way we take talk about it. And I'm not sitting there in front of the team me- – in a team meeting saying that, but I think that's – from a staff standpoint, that's the goal. You want to get in November with, where you're competing to go to Dallas. And so to do that, you got to you got to defend your home turf, which we've done so far. Um, and then you got to go beat quality teams on the road. And this is the first opportunity we've had in league play. You know, we, we didn't get it done versus Penn State. And Penn State continues to prove that they're probably one of the top five teams in the country. And they got a real chance to make the playoff. Um, but this is our next opportunity. And this is a team that um, that we played well against last year, but not good enough to win. And so we need to play a little bit better to, to give, us our ch- give ourselves a chance. And like I said earlier, too, Bob, I think this is – got to prove that we're a contender. You know, we're 1-0, and um, but – you know, I'm not sure that we've grabbed national attention or anything yet. You know, we got to continue to win games. Is there any direct plan with, with Garrett in terms of this week? I want to see, Mike, if he's healthy. Like, that's the first thing. And I'm not avoiding the question. I'm really not. Y'all want to know is if he's healthy, who's going to start quarterback? Get that. But I don't – it doesn't matter until he's healthy. And he, he won't start unless he can play what his strengths are, which means he can run. You know, so um, I didn't have him do much today. Um, I'll know more Tuesday and Wednesday, and and as we get later in the week. Yeah, what, the, what do you remember about Sonny as your coach? Um, so Sonny, first of all, we had we had a we had a really good offensive staff there. You, you think about it, uh, the late guy Morris was the uh, O line coach, and he went on to be the head coach of Kentucky and at Baylor. Uh, Tony Franklin, who's was a great offensive coordinator, kind of my mentor in the profession. He was a running back coach. Chris Hatcher, who's head coach at Sanford. Um, Won a national championship at Valdosta State. He's been a head coach for a really long time. He was the quarterback GA. Sonny was working with inside receivers GA. Mike Leach was receiver coach, obviously. Um, coach Leach, 